For the safety of your smile, use Pepsodent twice a day. See your dentist twice a year. Lever Brothers Company presents the Pepsodent Show, My Friend Irma, created by Cy Howard and starring Marie Wilson as Irma with Joan Banks as Jane. Friendship, friendship, just perfect friendship. When other friendships have been forgotten, theirs will still be hot. on child psychology and it said that if a child doesn't know what you're saying, act it out, dramatize it. Well, I hate to differ with an eminent psychologist, but believe me, he's wrong. How do I know? Well, I live with Irma Peterson, a child of 23. (laughs) And I have even drawn pictures for her and she still doesn't know what I'm talking about. But there, we're even because I can't understand what she's talking about. (laughs) For instance, yesterday I said, Irma? Yes, Jane? Look, it says in the paper that there's a new comet in the sky. And this evening it'll be visible to the naked eye. To the naked eye? I'm not going to stand on the roof without my clothes on a night like this. (laughs) See what I mean? Well, tonight I'm taking no chances. I'm reading. What are you reading? The Wall Street Market Report. Oh, that's nice. Are they having a sale on vegetables? (laughs) Honey, it's not that kind of a market. It carries financial news, and it... Oh, listen to this. The Wall Street Magazine offers a monthly prize of $150 to the secretary writing the best story of her most interesting experience. Contest is limited to secretaries working in the financial district, and they must be endorsed by their employer. Gee... Gosh, I wish I worked in the financial district, Jane. I had a wonderful experience. I went canoeing once with a fellow in the moonlight, and just when we got in the middle of the lake, he stopped paddling, so I said, what's the idea of stopping? And he said, we've run out of gas. (laughs) You didn't believe him. Yes, I did, but in those days, I was very naive. (laughs) Well, what did you do? Well, he was going to kiss me, so I jumped overboard and swam to shore. Irma, what makes you think that story is so unusual? Well, I was wearing a snood, and on the way over, I caught two fish. (laughs) Honey, I'll admit that story is a bit different, but I think it's more for Field and Stream magazine. Mm. Uh, This contest for the Wall Street magazine probably wants something more like the type of experience I had while I was working for Richard Rylander. But you don't work for Richard anymore. Yes, I know. So if I enter the contest, I'll probably give Richard a nom de plume. Oh, that'd be nice. Do you know what size he wears? (laughs) No, honey, that means a fictitious name. Mm. Naturally, I wouldn't want to do anything to antagonize Richard. We're still very friendly. Ah, you still love him, don't you, Jane? Love him? Well, uh, I don't know. Well, then why do you keep Richard's picture in the bedroom? Well, uh, uh, there was a frame there. I I had to make use of it. But you took out Lincoln's picture and put in Richard's. Why? (laughs) Well, uh, I never worked for Lincoln. Well, I'm glad you did it, Jane. I never thought it was right to have a married man's picture in our bedroom. But you do love Richard, don't you, Jane? Irma, please, I'm trying to keep my mind on my experience. Now, let me look over these rules again. I know you love him, Jane, and I admire you for it because you feel about Richard just the way I feel about my Al. Irma, I'm trying to concentrate. I I can use that prize money. When I'm with my Al, my heart is so gay and it seems to dance and sing a song like Cucaracha. (laughs) Uh, That's Spanish for I love you. (laughs) Gracious. That's Portuguese for sorry, wrong number. <laughs> Come in. It's only me, Professor Kropotkin. <laughs> Hello, Janie and Irma, my two little swimmers. One heading for the rocks, the other with rocks in her head. <laughs> oh, 
excuse me, girls. A little joke I picked up in the stone quarry. <laughs> well, Professor, you have a bump on your forehead. Yeah. How did that happen? Oh, I got that going into my room. I ran into the door. Oh, that's too bad. You should be more careful. Me? Mrs. O'Reilly is the one who should be more careful. When she puts a door on my room, first she should tell me. <laughs> What's new with you, girls? Oh, Jane's going to win $150 in a contest. Is that right, Jane? What kind of contest? Uh, only secretaries are eligible, but Irma's a little ahead of herself. I can't enter because Mr. Thompson, my boss, is out of town, and he'd have to sponsor me. Oh, that's too bad. Just what would you have to do to win? Well, you write a letter telling your most interesting experience. Oh, the ones I could tell. <laughs> <laughs> You know, when I first came to this country, I couldn't speak a word of English. And when I got hungry, I didn't know what to ask for. So luckily, I ran into a friend from the old country, and he said I should ask for hot dog. <laughs> Everybody in America eats hot dog. <laughs> yeah, but I couldn't remember the word hot. So wherever I went, all I could say is dog. Dog. You know that first month I almost starved to death? <laughs> But I did wind up with six collies and four cocker spaniels. Well, gosh, it could have been worse. You know, you might have forgotten the word dog and said hot wherever you went and wound up being fanned to death. <laughs> now, if you think that was bad, the third week I was in America, I wanted a place to live. So my friend said, ask for a room with a bath. But I couldn't remember it, so I asked for a bathroom. <laughs> you know that's no place to live? <laughs> but since I'm not in the contest, maybe I can help you, Janie. Well, thanks anyway, Professor, but with Mr. Thompson, my employer, out of town, I can't enter, because he'd have to sign my entry blank. Come in. Hello, girls. Oh, there you are, Professor. How'd you like the new door into your room? I bought it at a clearance sale. This I know. The bottom of that door clears the threshold by two feet. <laughs> oh, stop your complaining or I'll raise your rent. Remember, you've got air conditioning now. Tell me, girls, what's new? Oh, the Wall Street Magazine is offering $150 for the best letter for the most interesting experience of a secretary, and Jane wants to get into the contest. Well, more power to you, Janie. Of course, if it was a contest for landladies, oh, I could tell you plenty. <laughs> yes, I suppose everyone has had interesting experiences. Oh, not like mine. I remember one experience. I was a young girl. For you, that's a surprising experience. <laughs> Shop you. I started on a trip west. First, I tried to get reservations on a train. I'm and... a covered wagon. <laughs> Please, Professor. Well, anyway, I had to go over to New Jersey, so I took the ferry and. Hiawatha's canoe. <laughs> and when I got to the other side, who was there to meet me but. Captain John Smith. <laughs> There's no use in me trying to tell a story. That professor's so insulting. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mrs. O'Reilly. I always want you to think of me as a gentleman. Well, I'd like to. <laughs> Thank you. And I'll think of you as the same. <laughs> well, go on, Miss O'Reilly. Tell us some more about your experiences. Well, all right. Here's the one I like best. When I was a young lady, I went to a formal ball. I was wearing a pair of garters with diamonds on them. And while dancing, I lost one of my garters. Now, they were very valuable, and I knew it wouldn't be returned unless I offered an attractive reward. So I said the gentleman who returned the garter could slip it back on my leg. <laughs> <laughs> there must have been considerable excitement. Oh, indeed there was. The newspapers even printed me picture. Did you get the garter back? Yes, some gentleman found it and mailed it back to me. <laughs> I can't understand why he only lived next door. <laughs> oh, I hear someone coming up the stairs. Come along, Professor. Maybe the girls are expecting company. Company? Well, no, we're not expecting... Oh! 
Oh, hello, Richard, of all people. Hello, Jane. Hello, everybody. Uh, I hope I'm not intruding. No, of course not. This is a very pleasant surprise. Uh, we'll see you later. Come on, Mrs. O'Reilly, you old... Uh, we'll let the young people alone. <laughs> Well, it seems like a long time since I've been here, but everything looks the same. Tell me, Irma, is Al working? No, everything's the same. Uh, <laughs> do you have a cigarette, Jane? We have 80 packs. 80 packs? How come? Irma thought the cigarette machine was a jukebox. <laughs> well, uh, the place was dark, and I mistook Philip Morris for Perry Como. <laughs> yes, we know, honey. Uh, Richard, would you like a cocktail? Why, that's exactly why I stopped by. You know, Jane, I've been thinking of you lately, and I thought we might talk about it over cocktails. Oh, well, Richard, this, this is kind of sudden. Oh, come on, Jane. It's very seldom I get a chance to get away from the office this early, but Miss Benson is so efficient. Miss Benson? Is that the girl who took my place? Yes. I didn't know you'd met her. Well, I just caught a, a fleeting glance. I really don't know what she looks like. Don't know what she looks like. Why, Jane, you told me yourself she had to touch up the dark roots of her hair to nat match the part that was already bleached. Irma. <laughs> and that her hips are patterned. Irma her... Peterson, will you be still? Jane, don't be so upset. As a matter of fact, Carolyn's a very clever girl. She's just entered that Wall Street magazine contest, and I know she's going to win, hands down. Yes, I'm sure she is. Richard, do you mind if I take a, a rain check on those cocktails? Why, Jane? Well, I, I have a slight headache, and I, I'd like to take a couple of Carolins. Well, I mean, aspirins. Well, I'm sorry you've changed your mind, Jane, but if that's how you feel, we'll make it some other time. I'll give you a ring later on this evening. Goodbye. Oh, Jane, why are you angry? Carolyn. <laughs> Irma, do you know I worked for Richard three years before he even knew I had a first name? She's only been there three months, and he's calling her Carolyn. Well, that doesn't mean anything, Jane. I, I only worked for my boss, Mr. Clyde, one day, and he started in calling me names. <laughs> oh, if Mr. Thompson would only get back into town, I'd show Richard and that... that Carolyn. Come in. Hello, Jane. Hi, you chicken. Oh, hello, Al, honey. Hey, what goes here? I've never seen the both of you so down in the mouth. You look like a couple of cops passing an empty apple stand. Well, Richard just left, and, and Jane's upset because his secretary's in a contest, and Jane can't have her most interesting experience because her boss is away, and... and no, well, I mean... <laughs> Look, Jane, if you're in a jam, just say the word. I'm not in a jam. It's just that the Wall Street magazine is having a contest for secretaries with the most interesting experience, and the prize is $150, but... I can't enter because you have to be endorsed by your employer and Mr. Thompson's out of town. Can solve the whole thing. You can? Certainly. When my latest deal comes through, I'll have enough dough to buy both of you girls a mink coat. Oh, please. Don't bother me with your deals. What is it this time? Pasting toothpicks on cats and selling them for porcupines? <laughs> no, no, this one is on a higher level. More practical. Mm -hmm. It's a device to save wear and tear on dames whose husbands is always coming home late. See, it's a specially designed launching device with an electric eye. So no matter how quiet he opens the front door, he still gets conked over the head with a rolling pin without her having to get out of bed. <laughs> what do you think of it? Quite effective. I feel even worse than I did before. Irma, I'm going down to Wall Street and see if they'll let me enter the contest without Mr. Thompson's okay. I'll see you later. Oh, gee, Al, I feel so sorry for Jane. You know, she needs the prize money, but most of all, she wants to show Richard that she's smarter than Caroline. Yeah, and the big problem is to get her boss's permission. Or a reasonable facsimile. Uh, what do you mean, reasonable facsimile? Got a bright thought. Chicken, we both like Jane. We can't let her down. She must win that contest. But, Al, is what you're thinking legitimate? Chicken, I come here for love, not to be psychoanalyzed. <laughs> we'll handle matters so that Jane wins the contest. Uh, but, Al, uh, why are you so interested? Well, because I like her. She's fair and honest and a good sport. Besides, if she wins, I'm collecting 10% commission. <laughs>
Your winning smile is a Pepsodent smile. Again and again, people have found it true. The smile that wins is the Pepsodent smile. Airline stewardess June Cote can vouch for it. A Chicago-born girl with her heart set on flying, June left DePaul University to join American Airlines. First a reservations clerk, then a receptionist, she finally won her wings. Now June's winning smile is seen on the popular New York-Chicago flight, and June has told us... It's a Pepsodent smile. I've always liked Pepsodent toothpaste. It keeps my teeth so bright. And you know, a bright smile is part of my job. Like June Cody, people all over America have found the smile that wins is the Pepsodent smile. In recent comparison tests, thousands of people preferred Pepsodent with Irium over the brands they'd been using at home. Yes, Pepsodent won by the overwhelming average of three to one for its cool, minty taste for making breath cleaner and teeth brighter. Try a new Pepsodent toothpaste with Irium and you will see the smile that wins is the Pepsodent smile. Well, I just tried to persuade the contest editor of the magazine to let me enter the contest without being sponsored by my employer since he's out of town. But I was turned down so cold my ears are still frostbitten. And I'm burned up. Oh, it isn't the money so much, but... Every time I think of the look on Richard's face when he mentioned that Carolyn Benson, I see red. I think I'll walk home and try to cool off. Hmm. That Richard is so gullible. I'm sure that conniving little bleached brick top is twisting him around her little finger. I'd like to walk into his office and give her a piece of my mind. I I'd look her right in the eye and say, you don't look so smart to me. Maybe not, lady, but I don't go around talking to myself. <laughs> oh, after that, I decided I'd walk far enough, so I hailed a cab. Oh, gee, Al, I wish I knew what we could do to help Jane get into that contest. Got the angle, chicken. The rules say the contestant must be sponsored by their employer, right? Right, Al. Yeah. Well, since Jane's employer is out of town, we go to his wife. After all, Thompson may be the boss in the office, but I have met the old lady. And believe me, chicken, she is the head man in that outfit. <laughs> Gee, Al, do you think you can get her to do it? Sure, chicken. Can't miss. I'll tell you what to say. You pick up the phone and dial this number. Oh, all right, Al. Gosh, what will I say? Just say something like, um... Oh, uh, the Wall Street Magazine is having a contest and your husband's secretary wants to enter and she will need your permission because your husband is out of town. Got it? Perfectly. Hello? Uh, Mrs. Thompson, uh, the Wall Street Magazine is having a contest and you have permission to enter because your husband is out of town with his secretary. <laughs> Let me have that phone. Hello, Mrs. Thompson? What? Oh, Mrs. Thompson is out of town with her husband. Message? Yeah, yeah, when they come back, tell them there were no calls. <laughs> Goodbye. Chicken, when things are hot and you're in a spot, there's only one man with whom to cast your lot. Who else? Who else but... Hello, Joe? <laughs> ah, got a problem. Jane needs her boss's signature to get into a contest, and he's out of town. How can we bring him back? What? In a slab of concrete? <laughs> yeah, but Joe, we, we need his signature. Oh, before you slug him, you ask him for his autograph. <laughs> Joe, what makes you so violent today? Oh, it's your wedding anniversary. <laughs> yeah, well, Joe, what shall I do? Uh-huh. 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 Mm-hmm. Thank you, Joe, and goodbye, noble friend. Chicken, Joe has given me the idea. I go down to the magazine and pass myself off as Jane's boss. Well, what do you mean, Al? Chicken, you are now looking at Ellsworth Thompson. Come on, let's go. Oh, all right, Al. A and if you and Mr. Thompson won't mind, I'll walk in the middle. <laughs> Irma? Irma? I guess no one's here. Come in. 
It's only me again, the old professor. <laughs> uh, tell me, Janie, what did the man from the contest say? Well, I still have to get Mr. Thompson's endorsement, but I'm going to write the letter anyway. You see, tonight's the deadline, and there's still a chance he may get back in time. A uh, good idea, Janie. What experience are you going to write about? Well, when I was at Vassar, I used to spend all my leisure time on the bridle path. And after I came to work for Richard, one of his clients bought a horse. But the client was greatly worried because he thought the animal's spirit was broken. I've seen it happen. Well, I offered to ride the horse in Central Park. And believe me, I've never been on such a lively mare. She tossed me into the air, and I landed right in the lap of a sailor and his girl. The sailor looked at his girl and said, Why is it wherever we go, there's always a chaperone? <laughs> Sounds very cute, Janie. Why don't you type it? I think I will. She's not here, Al. Well, we can break the news to her later that we got permission for her to enter the contest. Gee, Al, you had so much nerve passing yourself off as Jane's boss, and that editor was so impressed. Yeah, chicken, but you almost ruined things when you said I had just made a killing on the market, and then you said it was all right because I did it in self-defense. Uh, yes, I know, but I, I think I made up for it when he asked you if you thought we were having a bull market, and I said, no, everybody's telling the truth. <laughs> Well, what's the difference? We put it over. Hey, Chicken, look. There's a letter in the typewriter here to the contest editor. What does it say, Al? Why, it's ridiculous. Listen to this. Gentlemen, when I was at Vassar... Is that bad, Al? Why, certainly. They don't give no $150 to people who can afford to go to Vassar. You got to appeal to their sympathy. Chicken, get out the typewriter. All right, Al. Uh, Wall Street Magazine contest editor, uh, Dear Mr. Wall... Yeah. <laughs> Dear Mr. Wall Chicken, that brain of yours goes in more different directions Than a four-way coal tablet <laughs> Make it Dear Mr. Contest All right <laughs> Now Instead of when I was at Vassar Make it uh, when I busted out of reform school I've got it, Al Oh, and look at this line Oh, look what she wrote I used to spend all my leisure time on the bridal path that's not true. Why not, Chicken? Jane was never married. <laughs> That's right. Strike it out, Chicken. Change it to, uh, I came from a very poor family, and you have no idea what $150 would have done for us in those days. Or even now. That's a hint, isn't it, Al? A subtle hint. Now, the rest of it we make up. At the age of 12, I got a job in a sweatshop. Making sweaters. No, 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 chicken Just say, I got a job in a sweatshop And there I was Well, this is the day they announced the winner of the contest But it means nothing to little Janie Mr. Thompson didn't get back in time So I didn't send my letter I suppose Richard and Carolyn will have something to crow about now But that doesn't bother me I don't even give her a second thought at least my hair is all one color. Now, where's that mystery book Irma's reading? Hello, Jane. Hello, kids. Where you been? Oh, no place in particular. <laughs> well, why aren't you out walking on such a nice day? Uh, we may get a message. What kind of a message? Oh, fiddly-doo. Yeah. <laughs> Irma, I don't like it when you say fiddly-doo. What are you two up to? Oh, nothing. Then why are the two of you winking at each other? Um, uh, well, I, I think I got something in my eye. Al, why are you winking? Uh, I, I got sympathy pains. <laughs> well, if the two of you are going to be crazy, I'll just go on with my... Uh, Irma. What's the matter, Jane? This carbon copy of a letter to the contest editor in this book with my name signed to the bottom of it. Busted out of reform school. Worked in a sweatshop. Chicken, why did you make a carbon? Well, in case a contest was a tie, I thought it would be good to have a carbon so we could enter again. <laughs> Al, you entered this letter for me? Why? How? Why did you do it? How did you get Mr. Thompson's permission? I was Mr. Thompson. <laughs> you? Oh, no. I'll be fired. Gosh, we... We just wanted to help you, Jane. Help me? 
I'll be the laughing stock of the country with this letter. I got a job in a sweatshop making pleated skirts, <laughs> and my hand got caught in the machine, and now I have the only pleated wrist in the world. <laughs> prize for plastic surgery <laughs> wishing you the same Jane Stacy <laughs> I'm ruined I'm, uh, I'm sorry Jane sorry you're always sorry you were sorry that time I had an important date and you set my watch back two hours to give me time to go to the beauty park <laughs> like sunshine biscuits. <laughs> You're always sorry. <laughs> Sit there, Jane. I'll get it. Hello? The contest? What? Jane Stacy is the winner? Uh, oh, you fool you. You must have the wrong Give note. me that telephone. <laughs> Hello? Th th this is Jane Stacy. What? Mine was the only letter with a sense of humor? <laughs> All the others were too stuffy to believe? You're mailing my check for $150? Oh, thank you, thank you so much. Goodbye. Al, Irma, did you hear? I won the $150. Uh, less 10% for your agent. <laughs> my agent? Yes, Al did it on those conditions. Oh, I get it. Well, okay, Al, I'll give you $15. Hey. But uh, since it's salary, you'll have to report it to the unemployment office. In that case, nothing doing I ain't gonna let a few bucks earn me the contempt of all my friends <laughs> Give it to Irma She can buy me a Christmas present oh, All right, Al, what do you want? Oh, I don't know Give me a tie oh, All right, Al, but don't tell me what size I want it to be a surprise <laughs> Your winning smile is a Pepsodent smile. Again and again, people have found the smile that wins is the Pepsodent smile. That's borne out by the vote of thousands who tried new Pepsodent toothpaste with Irium in a recent nationwide test. These people were given plain, unlabeled tubes of Pepsodent and were asked to compare it with the brands they were using at home. When their votes came in, Pepsodent won by the overwhelming average of three to one. These people say new Pepsodent tastes better, makes their breath cleaner, and their teeth brighter than any other toothpaste they tried. Remember, that's not just our opinion. That's what people say. They say it three to one. They've seen Pepsodent with Arium remove the film that makes teeth look dull, uncover new brightness in their smiles. Try it and you will see the smile that wins is the Pepsodent smile. Well, all's well that ends well. I'm still not too happy about Carol and Benson with Richard, but believe me in time, little Jane Stacy will take care of that. But I'm $135 ahead, and Irma has her $15 for Al's present. Irma? What, Jane? Uh, are you going to buy that tie for Christmas? No, I think I'll buy him some train tickets. Train tickets? Yes, Al's very sensitive to the weather. What do you mean? Well, he always says he likes to get out of town when things get hot. <laughs> and you know, hot or cold, rain or shine, life is like that when you live with my friend Irma. My Friend Irma is produced and directed by Cy Howard. Park Levy writes the script to Stanley Adams and Roland McLean. It's brought to you by Pepsi and Toothpaste with Arium. Another fine product of Lever Brothers Company. Bernie Wilson starred as Irma with Joan Banks as Jane. Wendell Nile speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.